Coral reefs are on the brink of collapse, and carbohydrates might be part of the answer in how some corals make it through oceanic heat waves. Water temperature rises as little as half to two degrees Celsius is enough to cause mass coral bleaching, and it causes a whole host of other problems for the coral as well. It stands to reason that, you know, in our tanks too, where stability is often the key to a thriving reef, a heat wave or a broken chiller can sometimes spell doom. Mitochondria are the primary source of energy in most eukaryotic cells. Cells like you'd find in yourself, in your dog, and in your corals. Corals are special though. They host symbiotic dinoflagellates, primarily from the genus Symbiodinium, which themselves contain chloroplasts, and therefore they can photosynthesize. The combination of mitochondria and those symbionts give coral a lot of adaptability. In the sunlight, they can get food directly from the sun. And at night, or when food is plentiful in the water, they can get additional food via their mitochondria, which converts chemicals from digested food into something called ATP. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is the basic molecule of energy for basically all living cells. It's involved in a number of cellular processes and as its phosphate bonds are broken, energy is released. Both the photosynthesis of the symbiodinium and the production of ATP by the mitochondria are affected negatively by high temperatures. Worse, because corals usually grow in very bright tropical parts of the world, all that energy coming in from the sun ends up creating things called reactive oxygen species. Those are chemicals that can cause oxidative damage to the cells. All those things that, you know, you eat with antioxidants, blueberries, well, they are combating those reactive oxygen species in you. Reactive oxygen species are a problem for corals, and it's not just because they cause fine lines and wrinkles. In corals, free radicals impair carbon fixation. They cause issues with protein folding, and they cause problems with the creation of ATP. That's to say, they're bad for corals. If we can avoid them in our corals, we should. So with all of that going on when heat waves happen, how do corals survive at all? How do frags make it through shows where the water temperature is likely a lot less than stable? What about during shipping? Well, just like you and me, when corals are unable to get energy from the sun, they turn to their energy reserves and their ability to eat fine particles of food from the water. This is one reason why it is so important to feed your corals regularly. Without this additional energy source, you're just increasing the risk of losing your corals if something goes wrong and they bleach a little bit. Corals can store energy in proteins, in lipids, that's things like wax, fats, oils, and as carbohydrates. Many species use lipids as the primary store of energy because they tend to last a lot longer versus the carbohydrates and proteins. Coral can only get carbohydrates by eating or breaking down its own tissues. Proteins ebb and flow with the season, and lipids are created by the coral itself, but carbs, those must be eaten. If this sounds a lot like a complex balancing act of building up energy before it's needed, then you'd be right. Environmental stress, like a heat wave, throws this balance into disarray. When a coral is exposed to warmer than normal water, its basic energy expenditures, called its basal metabolism, well, they go up. It takes more energy just to exist when the water is warmer. The coral spends all that energy on combating the oxidative stress from those reactive oxygen species. Corals contain genes that can be turned on to do just that, but it all takes raw materials and energy that could otherwise be used for something else. At the same time, heat decreases the coral's ability to absorb nutrients, and it even damages the ability to produce ATP. Push the temperature even higher, and corals can begin partial anaerobic respiration, in addition to their normal aerobic respiration which leads to significantly depleted energy reserves and leaves the animal in an unsustainable downward spiral. If the water does not cool off quickly while maintaining otherwise perfect parameters, that coral is not going to survive. 
Once the energy is depleted and oxidative damage is no longer controllable, it's over for the coral. Even if the coral can recover, its ATP stores remain depleted for months. One study looking at the effect of temperature on energy and ATP in corals found that at 7 degrees Celsius over normal, it works out to maybe around 91, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the carbohydrate levels dropped in stylophora frags by 76%. That's a huge loss in energy reserves. In the same study, lipid and protein levels did not change the same way. In that study, half the corals in that plus 7 degree group died. As corals bleach, they not only lose their symbionts, they also lose some of their ability to absorb nutrients from the food that they're still able to eat. This really highlights the importance of feeding our corals. You never know when a heater might break or when a power outage might happen and your chiller won't be running, all leading to a stressful time in your tank. You might be able to keep your tank livable for your corals, maybe only marginally, with battery-powered pumps and things like that. But still, the tank's not going to be its normal, stable, ideal self. In order to set your corals up to survive those periods, we need to ensure that they have substantial energy reserves. We feed our corals, or more accurately, their symbionts, with our intense reef tank lighting. But that's only half the picture. All corals also get energy via food, zooplankton in the water, also phytoplankton. We should ensure that our home corals are not robbed of this secondary food source, as it's increasingly being shown to be more and more important to the overall health and long-term survival of our coral. If you would like to learn more about this, I encourage you to check out a paper titled The Reef Building Coral Stylophora Pistolata Uses Stored Carbohydrates to Maintain ATP Levels Under Thermal Stress. There's a link down below in the description. And I think that you can also find the PDF from the author on a website called ResearchGate if you have trouble. Take a moment to subscribe to my channel. It really does help when you do that. And if you want to get a notification when I post new content, which I'm trying to do more regularly now, then hit that bell as well. But till next time, be kind to each other, stay safe, and have a fantastic day. Bye.